In Creo Parametric, you can use a fixture in your manufacturing CNC models. These are not required, but they're helpful later on when simulating the toolpath to check for interference with the fixture. To add a fixture, there are a couple different ways to do it, but probably the most direct is the fixture command right on the ribbon. And before I use that, I'm gonna show you the fixture that I'm going to use for this assembly. Now, this is a regular Creo parametric model. In this case, it happens to be an assembly. And in this fixture, I have defined flexibility so that the position of the movable part of the vise will update based on the workpiece. And to show you the flexibility in this model, I will go to File, and then Prepare, Model Properties. And down here we have Flexibility. I can click on the blue Change hyperlink. And there is a dimension for the workpiece. There you can see highlighted in green. And so I can adjust this value based on the manufacturing model that it is placed into. And I will make this model available on the Dropbox on my website if you wanna play around with it for yourself. So let me cancel out of this and then close the model properties dialog box. Let's go back to the manufacturing model. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to place it in here using the fixture command because since I define flexibility in here, it's a little weird. Like manufacturing mode doesn't expect flexibility. So eh, let me just show you. Okay, so I want to add the fixture. I will click on the fixture command and then we get the dashboard for the fixture setup. Now I will click on the add a fixture component icon from the components panel in the dashboard. Now I can find that assembly. Here it is. I will click the open button. And since I have flexibility assigned, I get this confirmation that says, hey, this has a predefined flexibility. Would you like to use it for flexible component definition? Well, in this particular situation, I'm going to say no, then I'll show you, I'll redo this and show you what happens if I say yes. So I'm gonna say no. And now this jumps to the point where I can begin assembling my fixture to the workpiece. So I will select this surface and then move my mouse over. I will tap the right mouse button to query to the bottom surface of the workpiece. I got a coincident constraint, that's good. Now I will pick this surface and I'll put it right up against a surface in the fixture, that one right there. I got a distance constraint. If you aren't aware, you can double click on the words for the constraints in the graphics area and you get a nice little dialog box where you can change it instead of moving your mouse all the way to the dashboard. I know I'm complaining like, oh my gosh, moving the mouse all the way to the dashboard, like it's some big hardship, but again, hey, people like to be efficient. All right, so now let me pick this, oops, let me hit the undo button. Let me go to new constraint and then pick this flat surface and I'll use this flat surface. So now everything is fully constrained. I can hit the middle mouse button in order to complete placement of the fixture. Then in the fixture setup dashboard, I can click the green check mark or the middle mouse button and it's placed. But you can see that I obviously do not have the right placement of the movable part of the vise. So I can right click on the Fixture assembly itself in the model tree, right mouse click and hold, and then go to flexible component, make flexible. And it brings up the varied items dialog box. There's that same dimension that I showed earlier, and I can adjust the dimension. If I happen to know the value, I can enter the value, or you can go to the drop down list and perform a measurement. So I will use curve length and then just grab the length of the Workpiece, that is good. Let's click the OK button. And then when I click OK out of the Varied Items dialog box, it updates. Let me try repainting so eh, surface is still highlighting in green. Let me just hit the check mark over here. And now you can see that the vise has updated so that the workpiece looks correct sitting on there. So this is one method. 
Now I'm gonna go back and show you what will happen if I had said yes to using component flexibility the first time. And to do that, let me close and then erase not displayed. And let me reopen that manufacturing model. Okay, so let's do it again. Let's go to fixture and let's hit the icon to add a fixture component. Let me grab the same vice as before. And last time I said no, this time I will say yes. And when I say yes, you'll notice that it basically throws the components in there. I don't get the, compo the component placement dashboard in order to define constraints. And the only thing I can do from here is hit the check mark. Oh yeah, one other thing to show you is that if you take a look at the process tab, this allows you to add a process time for the fixture setup. You can use this later on in pro process for CNC, I believe, but you do have the ability to add this process time for the fixture setup. Let me hit the check mark in order to place and you're like, hey, my fixture is in the wrong place. So now I can select the fixture assembly and then edit definition. And now I can go about doing my different constraints. Let me pick the bottom surface and then this surface and get a coincident. Let me pick this surface and query select to the vertical surface. Let me change this from a distance to a coincident. And let me close the little 3D note. Let me add in a new constraint for this surface to this surface and then hit the check mark. And once again, I can select the flexible component, right mouse click and hold, flexible component. Since I said that I did want to use flexibility, now I can go right to varied items and then change this once again to curve length, pick the edge length, okay, okay, and the fixture update. So again, there's just that little weird quirk about using a flexible model whereby, you know, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's a little weird. So just be aware of that. And so I want to show you one other way that you can put your fixture in the model. And by the way, you can see that we have a fixture setup feature here. But once again, let me close and erase not display just so I can get back to the manufacturing model with just the reference model and the workpiece. The other place that you can add the fixture is from the operation command, but you can't do an operation until you have a work center. And I've already done a couple videos on creating work centers. Let me make a work center quickly for a mill machine. And I'm just gonna leave the defaults in here. Let's leave this as three axis. I'm not going to change any of the other different things in here. I will just click the OK button. And so now that I have a work center, I can go to the operation command. If I didn't have a work center, I would get an issue with this drop down. Uh, I need a program zero from the datum drop down menu. I can create a coordinate system very quickly. And maybe I want the datum, the zero reference be, I don't know, located here. Orientation, let me use this surface to determine the Z direction. And I'll use this surface to determine, I don't know, let's see, X. Yeah, let's use that for X. I don't know, let's use that. Let's just click OK. I am just trying to create a coordinate system for the program zero to show you that. From the operation command, you also have the ability to define a fixture setup. You could select one of the existing fixture setups, or you could define it right here. You can add in your fixture component like I did before. But anyhow, let me cancel out of there. So there you have it. That's how you can use the fixture command in order to add a fixture into your manufacturing CNC model. And again, you can use this later on for checking for interference between the tool and the fixture later on when you are simulating the tool path.